If you have a cash crunch and you need money, redeeming your mutual fund units can seem the logical thing to do. After all, it's your money. But there can be times when redemption might not be the best course of action. For instance, say this was April of 2020 when all equity portfolios were down by 30%. That would have been a really bad time to sell. But you really need the money, so the next option most people would explore would be to take a personal loan or maxing out your credit cards. But what if there was a third option, an option that does not require you to liquidate your funds, an option that charges you interest only on the money that you use, an option that allows you to retain any dividends you make on the securities, and an option that offers you a loan at interest rates lower than personal loans. Yes, we are talking about loans against mutual funds and in this video we shall look at the many details of this product including its eligibility, loan limit, how to apply, how to access, interest rates and a lot more. With that being said, let's begin. The workings of a loan against mutual fund are pretty standard and can be summed up in three steps. Step one, like all loans, it starts with estimating your eligible loan limit, which is done on the basis of your mutual fund corpus. Step two is where you pledge your units in favor of the loan provider, who then sets up a lien or a legal claim over those units in the system. And step three is where post the lien setup, a loan is given to you, which can be a transfer to your bank account via NEFT, or as many banks are doing it now, it can also be in the form of an overdraft limit. In other words, what has happened here is that the bank or NBFC, which gives you the loan, now holds your mutual fund units as a security and will continue to hold them until you pay back the loan. And in case you are unable to pay the loan, the loan provider retains the right to sell these units to recover its money. That's pretty much how a loan against mutual fund works. And now that we have the basic sketch, let's start filling in some more color and begin with an understanding of loan eligibility. Anyone over the age of 18 years with money invested in mutual funds can apply for a loan. But the final disbursement is always subject to certain conditions and criteria as defined by the loan provider. For instance, in the case of equity-oriented funds, most banks allow only individuals to apply. However, for debt funds, banks are comfortable accepting units from not only individuals, but also from partnerships, Hindu undivided family, sole proprietors, and even companies can apply for these loans. Now, many financial institutions offer loan against mutual fund facility. Popular banks like the State Bank of India, HDFC Bank, ICICI, Access Bank all offer this product as do the bigger NBFCs like Bajaj FinServ, Tata Capital and Fullerton India. So while there is a wide choice of institutions, there is a much narrower choice of which mutual fund schemes will be accepted. What I mean is banks and NBFCs often have a list of approved mutual fund schemes and the loan is provided only against those schemes. For example, ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank accept only those schemes whose AMC is registered with CAMS, which means if you have units in an Access Mutual Fund or Mirai Asset or Motila Loswal or Nippon India, then these two banks would not be able to give you a loan against those particular units. Incidentally, the State Bank of India has an even smaller universe of approved schemes and offers a loan only against the schemes of SBI mutual fund. In fact, even within this single AMC window, the State Bank of India's approved list excludes a couple of important schemes and most notably the SBI equity hybrid fund, which is the AMC's second largest fund with over 38,000 crores of AEM. So each bank, each NBFC have their own terms and approved schemes. So when applying, you might have to approach more than one institution. So be prepared to do that. Having said this, one activity for which you won't have to run around and use multiple platforms is to do with the management and growth of your investments. 
because if you have the ET Money app, you are absolutely sorted when it comes to comparing, tracking and investing in over 1000 direct mutual funds. And if it is knowledge you seek, don't forget to access the brand new learn section on the ET Money app where we feature our most read blogs and our most viewed videos. So install it, download it, use it and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. The amount of loan that can be offered largely depends on two factors. One, the type of mutual fund scheme and second, the internal policies of the loan provider. With regards to the type of scheme, all institutions apply different limits on debt and equity funds. So for debt funds, most banks and NBFCs offer a loan limit of up to 80% of the net asset value. However, this percentage is much lower for equity funds where the loan limit is generally around the 50% mark. So as an example, if you have 5 lakhs of debt funds and 10 lakhs of equity funds, then that's 80% of 5 lakhs plus 50% of 10 lakhs, which comes to a maximum loan limit of 9 lakhs. Of course, this percentage changes from bank to bank depending on their internal underwriting and pricing policies. For instance, Axis Bank offers higher limits for debt funds and equity funds at 85% and 60% respectively. These internal policies also determine the maximum amount of loan that can be availed and here too different loan providers have different policies. For example, ICICI Bank offers a maximum of 20 lakhs of loan whereas NBFCs can go a lot higher. Like in the case of Fullerton India, this NBFC offers up to 5 crores and the likes of Aditya Birla Finance and Bajaj Finserve can go even higher and offer a loan limit of up to 10 crores. The State Bank of India has a sort of a dual structure on loan limits and offers a maximum of 20 lakhs against equity funds. But if you were pledging your debt funds, then the bank can go way higher and offer a loan limit of 5 crores. So I'm sure you're getting a flavor of this that different loan providers have different LTVs, different approved schemes, different loan limits, which means as a consumer, you might have to do a little running around to see which offer works the best for you. Now generally when you avail a loan, say a personal loan, the lending institution will either transfer the loan amount to your bank account via NEFT or else it will issue you a cheque which you can then deposit to your bank account. In the case of loans against mutual funds, the lending bank in most cases will not transfer any money to your account or give you a cheque. Instead, the bank would open up a current account for you and allot an overdraft facility to that account which means if you need the money, you can withdraw it or transfer it from this current account. For example, let's say you pledge 4 lakhs of equity mutual funds, which then means that the bank would offer a loan limit of 2 lakhs based on the 50% of asset value logic. This 2 lakhs is now your overdraft limit and you can borrow up to this amount. But let's say you currently don't need the 2 lakhs and need only 1 lakh rupees. That's where the beauty of this overdraft arrangement comes in because if you borrow only 1 lakh rupees then the bank will charge interest on just the 1 lakh that you've withdrawn and not on the entire overdraft limit of 2 lakhs. This is a big plus point for the loan against mutual fund facility which allows you to keep the interest rates at its lowest by smartly using the overdraft facility. Now a question that is often asked is what happens to the OD limit if the stock markets fall and the NAV of the pledged fund goes down? It's a pretty valid question so let's go back to our example where we had pledged 4 lakhs of equity funds against which we got an OD limit of 2 lakhs. So say there was a deep correction in the stock markets and the equity fund value drops to 3 lakhs. This means the notional OD limit will no longer be 2 lakhs but would have come down to 1.5 lakhs. In this case, the bank will present the loanee with two options. Option 1 is where the bank reduces the OD limit to 1.5 lakhs or option 2 wherein the loanee can keep the 2 lakhs OD limit by pledging an additional 1 lakh rupees worth of mutual fund units to take the NAV back to 4 lakhs. This then leads to another related question which is what happens if this person had already borrowed 1.8 lakhs? 
In this case, the bank would ask the loanee to pay that margin gap of 30,000 rupees within a specific period of time. And in case the loanee is not able to come up with this difference money, then the bank will proceed with selling some of the mutual fund units to restore the balance. This exercise of checking if the fund value supports the OD limit is done by most banks on a periodic basis and most of them do it once a week. Applying for a loan against mutual funds can be ridiculously simple or outrightly complex. The complex approach is the old school offline method which requires applicants to approach a bank or an agent, submit KYC documents like address proof, photographs, etc. Submit a mutual fund holding statement, sign a pledge form and in some cases submit an income proof such as a form 16, ITR, etc. The process too is a bit time consuming in terms of collecting these documents, verifying them, sending it over to the underwriters, then the loan processing team which takes this up with registrars for lien marking, etc, etc. On the other hand, the faster and easier way of applying and receiving a loan is of course doing it via the online method. A number of financial institutions have already integrated their systems with registrars like CAMS, which means marking a lien on specific schemes is now a matter of seconds. So if you are a bank customer and if that bank has an online process for availing loans against mutual funds, then you can omit most of the steps that happens in an offline process and probably get the overdraft limit within a couple of days. Loan providers charge an interest rate on your loan amount or the utilized part of your OD limit. This interest rate is almost always lower than the personal loan interest rate and that makes sense because loans against mutual funds are backed by a collateral which happens to be the MF units you have pledged with the loan provider. Banks charge interest rates after taking into account a number of variables and while the rate varies from bank to bank, one can typically expect an annual interest rate of 10 to 12%. In fact, here's the list of interest rates from different institutions that our team has compiled from multiple sources. These rates are subject to uninformed changes, so please double check these numbers, but the idea here is to give you a trend to work with. Also remember, these interest rates are not cast in stone and given the high competition that's there, don't forget to negotiate with the loan providers for better rates. For instance, our research shows that some lenders are amenable to reducing the interest rate if the lien is drawn on debt mutual funds as against equity funds. This is not something that is advertised, so you'll need to put on your negotiation boots and try to get the best deal possible for yourself. In addition to interest rates, there are some additional charges which the customer has to bear. Now, banks typically have three types of charges. First, there is the processing fee, second, an annual maintenance fee, and thirdly, a renewal charge. There are a few more minor charges, but these three are the bigger ones. For instance, ICICI Bank charges a loan processing fee of 3,500 rupees plus GST and renewal charges of 2,500 rupees plus GST. SBI charges 0.75% of the loan amount as processing fees with a minimum of 1000 rupees plus GST. And similarly, HDFC Bank has its own schedule of charges which have a digital and non-digital component to it. So there are different charges depending on the mode of acquisition. For an updated and comprehensive list of charges, please do visit the bank or NBFC's website or ask for a copy of charges from their customer service team. Whatever the marketing copy might say, getting a loan and in a lot of cases deciding on the lender is not an easy task. So if you were to put this all together in a checklist, then here are the 10 points one needs to consider when obtaining a loan against mutual fund. One, which lending institution to approach. Two, do you have any special eligibility requirement like an HUF partnership or company? 3. What are the minimum and maximum loan amounts offered? 4. Which are the approved list of mutual fund schemes? Point 5. The percentage of NAV offered for debt and equity schemes? Point 6. Whether the lender offers an overdraft or if they offer a regular loan? Point 7. Offline versus online application? 
Point eight, the speed of dispersing the loan, the faster the better. Nine, the interest rate charged on the loan. And finally, point 10, which revolves around the service charges. If you organize your thoughts around these 10 points, we really don't see any reason why you won't get an amazing deal on the loan against MF. And we'll probably want to use it over a personal loan in the near future as well. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope you liked this presentation and would continue to show us your love by subscribing and sharing this video with your friends and family. Thank you for watching and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.